Okay, I'll transition over to you right now. What's up, everybody? Tom here from Sycamore Street Studios and from the new podcast called A Cast to the Past. I'm going to do some shameless self-promotion up top and just tell you about this gaming-themed podcast that I host with my best friend, Josh. We take a time travel back to some of the uh, most unique games of the past, and we uh, just talk about them. It's two BFFs talking about games in a chill, you know, relaxed environment, and uh, we'd like to have you come on and um you know join us on these little trips through history so you can find us on twitter at a cast to the past and actually right now we're running our 2019 march madness gaming tournament where we're pitting games for the super nintendo the dreamcast the ps2 and the what's the one i didn't say yet the game boy advance against each other so a lot of cool titles on there you could uh, actually end up helping us determine a future episode so uh Really glad to be on this sh show again. Uh, I was on last year with my girlfriend, Mary. We read some Harry Potter trivia just to uh, help Pat and the boys transition between their sets. Uh, loving the stream once again because everything that these guys do, they are heckin' talented. Uh, and they're looking heckin' good with those nails, them nails. I would actually like to see some of these higher tier incentives. Uh, <laughs> these look modifications I, don't know, I might have to kick in towards making those possible um but so i've got time to fill for you guys so um last year my segment was movie themed and i figured this year it's gotta be movie themed so um i was at work like last summer we were cleaning out a bunch of old crap and i found somehow in this building i found a the novelization of the 1997 film Batman and Robin. So, given that I have this cherished piece of American literature in my house, I figured I need to share it with the world. I would be doing a terrible thing if I kept this all to myself. So I'm going to uh, see how much of a dramatic reading I can get through of the Alan Grant novelization of Batman and Robin based on the screenplay by Akiva Goldsmith. <clears throat> Chapter 1. In a chamber, all gleaming chrome and inky shadow, a black gauntlet snapped into place. The folds of a dark cape whipped around, the shoulders clad in black, a bat-shaped buckle locked securely. Deep in the bat cave, Batman was preparing for action. I actually love this opening paragraph because this is clearly the, the montage of extreme close-ups on Batman and Robin suiting up at the beginning of this movie, except the, the author didn't novelize uh, the close-ups on Batman's butt. So a little, like, he's got to go into more detail here. I mean, this is a novel. You're supposed to use words. Close by, a hand chose a silver throwing bird from a weapons array. A black eye mask was raised into place. Tunic armor clicked shut, revealing the insignia of Robin. Batman emerged from his costume vault into the massive grandeur of the Batcave. After the cave had been destroyed by the Riddler, a fortune had been spent on redesigning and rebuilding it. Oh, whoa. Uh, I actually love this piece of continuity between Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. How about that? I think people are going to want to know how they rebuilt the cave. And look, he gave it to us. How about deep excavation had virtually doubled its size. New state-of-the-art computer systems flashed. Yeah, that, that terrific uh, Windows 2000 computer system that Alfred uses in the movie where he's all like a stuttering mess uh, talking to Batgirl. <laughs> State of the art. Through a hiss of escaping steam, Batman strode towards the pedestal that rose from the center of the cave floor. On it stood a new, sleeker, more powerful Batmobile. A Batmobile that you can get in toy stores back in 1997. Robin appeared at the door of his own vault, ready to follow. A discreet cough announced the presence of Alfred Pennyworth, the butler who was entrusted with the crime fighter's secret. He stepped forward out of the shadows. I like how they give Alfred a more uh, menacing, looming entrance than Batman and Robin even got. Do call if we're going to be late for dinner, sir, he said in his rich English voice as his boss slid into the Batmobile. The Batmobile's turbos roared into life, and the vehicle shot forward through the arches of the cave across the tunnel. Oh, the arches of the cave access tunnel. My bad. Behind the segmented top of the Batmobile, service pedestals split wide, like the opening of petals, like the opening petals of a flower. Well, not the opening wings of a bat. I mean, it's a Batmobile. Re 
revealed at its center was the Red Bird, Robin's newly customized motorcycle. Drive carefully, Alfred admonished. Robin grinned as he settled onto the bike's saddle and gunned its engines into Rocket's life. Don't wait up, Al, he said, the words almost lost in the roar as the Red Bird exploded into motion, speeding off after the Batmobile. Alfred stood for a moment and watched them go. Then he relaxed, leaning his weight against the main computer console. For a moment, he let a great feeling of weakness wash over him, before mentally pulling himself together again. He was not as well as he seemed. The Red Bird and the Batmobile streaked down the tunnel together. Ten police cruisers frozen solid on the Gotham Expressway, Batman reported grimly. His words instantly relate to Robin, the sophisticated radio mics that kept him in constant communication. I, I, I love when you're, you're trying to read aloud, because sometimes dialogue will get brought in in like the first chapter before you realize what character uh, is speaking it and you have to just immediately throw a tone on the voice like i just jumped into that sentence not realizing it was me batman who was saying it and i gave him like the voice of a bored radio news guy so okay i guess i'm gonna keep the voice for the rest of it what a giant drilling truck burrowing under the city rob returned scanning his own monitor the conclusion was inescapable mr free Robin consulted the data scrolling on his console screen. The back computer tracks him heading for the Gotham Museum. Batman nodded. There's a new antiquities exhibit, the second son of the Sudan. Robin recalled the news feature he'd read that morning. Of course, Freeze is going to steal the giant white diamond. No, Robin. Ro Batman contradicted his young partner. He's going to jail. Oh, burn. Seconds later, they burst out of the hidden tunnel into the night. The Gotham Museum had been constructed in the late 1800s during one of Gotham City's periodic booms, a stone and glass palace that had cost a king's ransom to build. It stood on the edge of Robertson Park. On this troubled night, a giant drilling truck pointed up through the rubble of the shattered floor of the museum's great hall, where it had come to rest. Dim light glimmered as it reflected off the drill's huge glass head. The drill's made of glass? How did it get up through, like, a concrete floor if it's made of glass? Eh. All right. All around was a scene from a nightmare. A model of a mighty brontosaurus, a hundred feet from head to tail, gleamed in the muted light, frozen. Like every other exhibit in the hall, on the steps of an Aztec temple exhibit, three uniformed guards stood like statues. The shatterproof glass of a giant diamond case suddenly started to glow blue, then white. It held for a moment, then exploded into a thousand flying fragments. High on a pyramid altar stood a silver-suited figure, his bald white head visible beneath his helmet he wore. He held a high-tech bazooka in one hand. Bald white head? Mr. Freeze is a blue boy. He's a blue man group member. The Iceman cometh, the villain known as Mr. Freeze announced archly, his voice as cold as the frigid air. A gang of thugs in thermal suits skated to the base of the steps. The Iceman Freeze's dangerous hirelings. Oh, I didn't know they were actually called Icemen. I thought when he just said the Iceman cometh, he was just doing an unbearable ice pun. That's, yeah, that's something. Two of the Icemen held a moaning, shivering guard. Please, the man begged, show some mercy. The very air seemed to shimmer with cold around him. Mr. Freeze stirred, started down the altar steps. I'm afraid my condition has left me cold to you, please, he said thinly. He fired his bazooka without warning. A beam of cryonic energy leapt from it, engulfing the guard. The heat instantly drained from the man's body, flash freezing him and turning him into a statue of glittering ice. Freeze tapped on the guard's frozen cheeks. Copsicle, he said with no trace of a smile. Oh, they didn't have that gag in the movie. Oh, I'm disappointed. He walked past the guard and headed for the shattered display case. In this universe, he went on speaking as if there is only one absolute... He swiped away the broken glass and twisted steel and stooped to retrieve a tremendous diamond from the debris. In one powerful hand, he raised the second son of the Sudan high over his head, the gem sparkling like a star as light hit it. Everything freezes. Suddenly, the skylight in the high roof exploded. Batman crashed through it, free falling down into the vast chamber. Cape streaming behind him, the dark knight landed on the frozen brontosaurus's neck and began to slide feet first down its icy surface. Mr. Freeze could only stare in astonishment as Batman came shooting off the huge beast's tail to smash into the villain's chest. The diamond flew from Freeze's grasp and skidded across the frozen floor. Freeze coolly aimed his gun. That on ice, anyone? Ah, uh, nah, that wasn't good. My voice or the joke, they was just both bad. But before Freeze could pull the trigger, Batman's foot lashed out. He kicked the weapon from Freeze's grasp. 
Then they get spinning into the air. Didn't your mother tell you never to play with guns? In answer, Freeze cartwheeled across the room. He cartwheeled across the room. Coming to a sudden halt, the villain reached into the air to grab the fallen weapon. You're not sending me to the cooler, he snarled, his fingers tightening on the trigger. A solid jet of frigid energy lanced towards Batman. Even as the Dark Knight dodged the blast, Freeze took aim again. There was a loud crash, and Freeze turned to see Robin on his Redbird blast in through the museum's front doors. Robin jerked back on the bars, gunning the turbos, and the Redbird soared into the air. As he passed over Freeze's head, Robin lashed out with his foot at the gun. It clattered to the altar atop the giant pyramid. He scores, Robin laughed, and the crowd goes wild. He locked the bike into a sideways skid as it came down to land. It zoomed past an exhibit, sending a priceless vase toppling. Robin reached out to grab a statue, holding tight as he whipped across an athlete. No, oh, blah, blah, blah. Robin reached out, holding tight as he whipped around in an athletic dismount. An instant before the vase hit the floor, Batman's gauntleted hand reached out to snatch it to safety. Robin joined him as he replaced it on a pedestal, and together they turned to race for free. Grab the gem, the villain commanded his henchmen. Kill the heroes! Icemen in hockey masks, sticks in hand, rushed the crime fighters from both sides. Batman and Robin immediately launched into a martial arts extravaganza, ducking and weaving as the wildly swung hockey sticks arced and swooped at them. The crime fighters' fists and feet shot out time and again to punch a jar, clip an ankle. Ignoring the fight, Freeze raced towards the altar and his fallen gun. Once he had it again, no one could stand up to him. The diamond lay on the ice beyond Freeze's thugs. Simultaneously, Batman and Robin snatched the hockey sticks away from their attackers, then used them to hook the villain's ankles and upend them. The two fought as a team, each screaming, seeming to read the other's mind and how... Dang, I'm getting ahead of myself. Each seeming to read each other's mind and know what he was going to do next. Whatever Freeze is paying these thugs, Robin thought, it isn't enough. Both heroes pressed a concealed button on their belts. Sections of their boot soles rolled back and miniature skate blades popped out. Now they'd be on equal footing with the enemy. Freeze had made it to his gun and he turned to fire the energy beam, creating a, a hoary ice bridge. A hoary? Hoary? H-O-A-R-Y? Hoary? All right. Ice bridge that stretched all the way down to the museum floor. Caution, he quipped. Bridge may ice over. In perfect control, the villain slid down the bridge to the floor below and ran for his drilling truck. You get the ice, Batman called, duck decking the last op opponent and taking t and turning to skate away. I'll get the ice, man. Batman was closing fast on Freeze when the villain turned and fired. Batman ducked, holding up his cape as a shield, deflecting the beam into an ice man, freezing the thug solid. Robin sped up to join Batman. I got mine, the younger man said, holding up the diamond. Where's yours? Freeze had disappeared behind the giant brontosaurus. What killed the dinosaurs? He asked himself, hands re reaching to push against the creature's belly. The Ice Age, he replied, muscles straining as he pushed with all his might. The great beast toppled forward. It crashed hard to the floor in front of the oncoming Batman and Robin, the brittle body bursting like a bomb into a million icy shards. He's, he's definitely extinct, Robin joked as the duo weaved and ducked to avoid the icy debris. Suddenly, an ice man came skating in from the side. His blow missed Robin, but clipped the boy's hand, sending the diamond flying free. It's really weird that they keep calling Ro Robin a boy. Like, Chris O'Donnell was, like, in his mid-twenties when this movie was made. Freeze paused as he climbed towards the hatch of his specially modified drilling truck, drinking in the scene. The Icemen were a rushing wall between the heroes and the gem. Batman and Robin skated straight at their foes, reaching out to pull flagpoles from a display, maneuvering them as if they were about to joust with the villains. But as the last second, they drove their poles into the ice and vaulted up over the heads of the startled Icemen. Batman and Robin came down on the landing, only feet from the sun Sudanese gem that Freeze wanted so badly. Even as Batman reached out for it, an Iceman stick scythed towards it, a slap shot. Sending the diamond whirling through the air to land cleanly in Mr. Freeze's glove. Thanks for playing! Freeze dropped down into the cab of his giant drilling machine and hit the button to close the hatch. Batman leapt. Oh. Oh, hey, Northway Nest, uh, wanted to let you know I am reading the novelization of the 1997 film Batman and Robin because this perfect masterpiece of cinema could probably only be made better in book form. Um, and as I've been reading it, I'm surprised to find out that 
this somehow is a little better than the movie in that there's even more unnecessary detail and ice puns than there were in that film. So uh, I don't even think I'm going to get much further, but I'll just read a little bit more with my awful, awful impressions of these awful, awful performances. Batman leapt up onto the banister. Round up the thugs, you and Robin. I'll get Freeze. He vaulted up onto the truck and threw himself through the hatch just before it slid close. Inside, Freeze stood at the main console in the drill's tough and glass head. He keeps calling the dr- saying the drill is made of glass. How is a drill made of glass? It would it defeats the purpose. It'd be like making a car out of whipped cream. Nice of you to drop in, he said to Batman. Oh, that was Mr. Freeze. Nice of you to drop in, he said to Batman, without even turning, as the hero landed behind him. The villain hit another button, and there was a sudden mighty roar. Ah, this is... This book is a mouthful. The control capsule was set on the end of an injection cylinder, and now blasted out of the drilling truck, rising like a rocket towards the museum roof. Robin paused at the sound, turning from his chase. He lifted up onto a handrail, slid down, grabbed a banner, and swung. Ah... Yeah, 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 and then the rocket goes up. It's it's the rocket scene from Batman and Robin. This this book is just hilarious for how much detail it puts into something that's obviously just so silly when you watch it. Um, so would I recommend reading the book or just watching the movie? Um, yeah, just watch the Batman and Robin movie if you have to. Uh, Alan Grant. I can't say he's a bad writer. He's got a way with words, but it's just. It's just funny listening to put this much detail into this concept. Um, so I think Pat and the gang are going to be back soon. So uh, I th- think it's only proper for me to just remind everyone that this marathon is benefiting the Children's Miracle Hospital Network through Extra Life. And that is like an incredibly awesome cause. Um, the Children's Miracle Hospital Network is basically a Los Angeles-based uh, location well because they're west coast guys so they're looking to benefit the los angeles hospital but specifically this fund is going to go into a kind of backup relief uh fund that hospitals can use to treat kids who may not have uh funds right away or insurance to cover life you know life-saving procedures and that's awesome you know this is literally a cause that could save someone's life so any donations that you could provide to towards it is going to ideally change someone's life uh and they have a lot of great incentives if you've seen on the stream already uh they've already had to paint each other's nails and take several pies to the face there's some more extreme challenging incentives as well you can uh uh, donate and require some member of the team to eat a habanero pepper or take some I'm going to assume it's really extreme hot sauce. Uh, I'm personally not a hot sauce guy because I am weak. But if they have the the courage in the stomach to take those hot sauce, a spoonful of this. Oh, jeez. And even the name of it is the hot sauce. It just seems intimidating. But if you check out the incentives list um, down under the stream window, there's a lot of fun stuff. Um, there even a couple of the boys are even willing to be putting their their hair on the line so uh that's something that's that's pretty cool i'm gonna throw in as much as i can and uh just do what i can to help this cause and help them uh with their stream because this is a great effort look they're i think what you guys are like halfway through the day at this point right you got it oh yeah over you're over halfway there so that's really awesome keep at it uh thanks for everyone who put up with me in the stream uh reading you literature based off of uh movies that i'm sure people have mixed opinions on you can uh find me on twitter at sycamore street studios and uh at my gaming podcast that i host with my best friend josh uh that's called a cast to the past our logo is a it's a combination of the triforce and the um the back to the future flux capacitor uh, our producer Becca whipped that up. I think it's pretty cool. Um, the next episode that we're dropping is actually going to be about Tony Hawk Underground, which is uh, a rocking game from my early teenage years. Uh, I got exposed to a lot of great music off that game, and it's got this ridiculously fun and also kind of hilarious story mode in it that just makes you question all the main character's choices. But at its core, it's that great classic Tony Hawk gameplay uh, that held up. For so long until Tony Hawk 5 came out and uh, 
just destroyed that series. I hear noises. I think Pat's yes. coming back. Pat is back, despite hey, popular belief. Up? Doggone it, my ponytail just fell out. So yeah, we're we're uh, we're all set then for event. Thank you so much for holding down the fort. I got to hear a little bit of it about Batman and Robin novelization. That's uh, quite some interesting <laughs> stuff you got going on there. Oh yeah, it's, it's classic American literature. Classic you know? American like, you literature know. for sure. You you got to read books. It you got to read mind. books. Absolutely. All right, thank you, Tom. I'm going to uh, head off this call. Thanks for hang, awesome. hanging out. Best 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 of luck, man. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.